So this is our fifth class. The topic for today is very connected to the topic for last uh, week. We talked about ratios and percentages. Sorry, last week we talked about decimals. Today we're talking about ratios and percentages. Both of those are very uh, so you'll see some similar themes. So we'll do ratios, proportions, and then percentages. Those are uh, topics for today. Um, and yeah, so again, if anyone has any questions from last time, uh, we can put those in the chat or otherwise I'll go straight into today's topic. Okay, no questions. So then let's go into ratios. So the key for ratio is remembering that a ratio is just like a fraction um, and ratios compare two quantities. Uh, so for example, you might see a ratio like two colon three, that means two is to three. So ratios compare quantity, like the quantity two and three. Uh, it's the same as writing two over three as a fraction. So um, being able to relate ratios and fractions is a useful skill. The other thing is ratio problems are often word problems, and then they'll include things like units, like you know feet, inches, and it'll be important not to confuse. Like if you say if they say two feet, and then another quantity is three inches, you don't want to say okay two inches three inches because that's a lot different from saying two feet and three inches. So just be care, careful with that. Then you want to rem remember to simplify uh, because um, with ratios and fractions and anything like that, you always want to simplify and speed is a speed is a rate speed is pretty much distance over time uh, and speed is something you want to be careful with as we'll see in actually the first two problems that are um, for today's class so just generally be careful with average speed so this is our first problem uh, you run at 10 miles per hour for so mph is miles per hour uh, you run at 10 miles per hour for 30 minutes and then 60 miles per hour for 30 minutes what is your average speed so if anyone wants to do a guess or do something like that in the chat, or you can solve it pretty quickly too. So if you want to do that, I'll give about 10 seconds and then I'll give the solution. Yes, yeah, so already someone put the correct answer, so that's good. Um, the way we solve this problem is to say, okay, so 10, so average speed, average speed is equal to total, total, distance divided by time elapsed. Time elapsed is like how much time happened. Elapsed is like how much time happened. So time elapsed. So this is how we calculate average speed. It's the total distance divided by the time elapsed. And then we can actually calculate the total distance and things like that. So uh, the total distance in this case will be um, The distance traveled in the first part, so we'll, we'll call that uh, D1, so distance in the first part, plus distance in the second part. So I'm saying the first part is when you're running 10 miles per hour for 30 minutes, and then the second part is uh, 30, 60 miles per hour for 30 minutes. So distance is just speed times time. So in the first part, the distance one is going to be equal to, okay, 10 miles per hour, 10 mph times 30 minutes, this is where units is important. If we just multiply by 30, we're not gonna get uh, something correct because 30 minutes is actually one half of an hour. So the, the 10 miles per hour is in hours. So we have to make sure that the minutes or the time is also in hours. So we say distance one is 10 miles per hour times one half hours. So we're gonna run five miles per hour, or sorry, five miles in that 30, first 30 minutes when we're running at 10 miles per hour. Next, we're gonna run as fast as a cheetah, 60 miles per hour, and let me let some people in the waiting room. Yeah, so the second distance, um, as we said, the first distance is five miles. The second distance, you're gonna run 60 miles per hour. So that's you're as fast as a cheetah. And you're going 60, oh, sorry, 60 miles per hour times, uh, and you're gonna do this again for 30 minutes. And as we said before, it's important not to, uh, you know, change the units. So we keep the units consistent in hours because miles per hour is in hours. 
So 30 minutes is one half hours. So here we are traveling 35 miles. So then average speed is going to be equal to, to the total distance, which is, sorry, I got a step ahead of myself. So the average speed is going to be total distance, which is 30 miles. And then we divide it by time elapsed and 30 minutes plus 30 minutes is one hour total. So that means our average speed is 35 miles per hour. And this is good. You could, a lot of people said in the chat, why don't you just take the average of 60 and 10? Uh, that's much quicker. Um, and yeah, that, that's correct for this problem. But generally, I think it's better to do it in this framework step by step when you're dealing with average speed, as we'll see in the next problem, because average speed is confusing. When the time is equal, then when the amount of time is equal, then you can definitely just take the average of the speeds and then you can find the average speed. But as we see in this next problem, when the, t when the distances are equal, but the times may not be equal, then you can't just take the average of 10 and 60 in this case. So I'll give about 10 seconds, oh sorry, I'll give about 10 seconds for you guys to uh, read through this problem. You run at 10 miles per hour for 30, mi 30 miles, not 30 minutes, and then run at 60 miles per hour for 30 miles. What is your average speed this time? And maybe make a prediction. Do you think it'll, it's going to be, in the chat, you can make a prediction. Is, is it going to be uh, 35 miles per hour? Is it going to be a lot more than 35 miles per hour? Is it going to be a lot less? Uh, just, I guess, make a prediction based on that. And again, you see how in this word problem, like this, these two problems are very similar. It's just the second one, the one word has changed, minutes to miles. And as we're going to see, that changes everything. That changes the approach to the problem as well. So let's try it now. So as we said before, average speed is equal to the total distance. And we divide the total distance by the time elapsed. Oops. So average speed, total distance, divided by time elapsed. The next part is now we have to find, um, we actually know the total distance right away because we know, okay, the first, the first, in the first part we travel for 30 miles, the second part we travel for 30 miles. So instantly we know that the total distance is 60 miles. Um, in the last problem, we knew instantly that the time elapsed was 60 minutes, so one hour. But in this case, we actually have to find um, the time elapsed because nothing in this problem gives us the time elapsed. So we can say again, um, we'll find the time in once, the first section, uh, and, and the, we'll find the time over the first section when you're running 10 miles per hour for 30 miles. And then we'll do the same thing for the second, second time section uh, when you're running at 60 miles per hour for 30 miles. So at time one, uh, you're running at 30 miles per hour for 30 miles. And we said, thir uh, we said uh, remember, distance is just uh, time times um, speed. So we can pretty much uh, take distance, divide by time, and we'll get speed. So we have the distance, 30 miles. So we have the distance, 30 miles, and we divide by um, the speed, 30 mph. And this gives us three hours. So it actually, it actually will take in the first section three hours to run um, 30 miles if you're going at 10 miles per hour, which makes sense because if you're going 10 miles per hour, that means in the first hour you go 10 miles, second mile you go 10 out, 10 miles, and then the third hour you go 10 miles. So 10 plus 10 plus 10 is 30. So it makes sense that um, you'll go uh, 30 miles in that three hours. So that's just a quick way you can check your work. Uh, and then the time section two, going at 30 miles again, but this time you're going much faster, you're going as fast as she does, 60 miles per hour, and this will be one half hours. So now we see that total time is 3.5 hours, so if you go back to average speed, average speed is equal to 60 miles divided by 3.5 hours, and then we can uh, we can calculate this to 120 over 7 miles per hour 
and that, that's a that's a completely correct answer. Um, that's the simplified fraction, common fraction. Uh, but if we want to maybe just get a sense of what this actually is, we can just quickly we can quickly estimate it uh, to be around uh, 17, 17.5, it's just a 17.42-ish. Um, so I'm just rounding there, but that's what it would be. And that tells us that if we look back to here in the last problem, we saw that the average speed is uh, 35. But in this case, we're spending much, much more time traveling at, traveling at 10 miles per hour. So because we're spending much, much more time traveling at 10 miles per hour, the average is gonna be a lot closer to 10 miles per hour. Um, and the reason why take, we're spending much more time at 10 miles per hour is because uh, simply going at 10 miles per hour for the same distance is gonna take six times longer uh, than going at uh, 60 miles per hour. So, um, yeah, let's go on to the next problem for today. This one is a much more conventional ratio problem. I wanted to start start off with those two uh, ratios, sorry, those two distance time problems because they uh, were related to what we talked about when we did equations and uh, word problems uh, in class three and also the fractions in class class. But here's some more conventional ratio problems. Yeah, people seem to be getting this correct so in the chat already. So here we're going to set up what's called a proportion. Uh, and let me just define real quick. A proportion is a relationship between two ratios. Or let me say that better. A proportion is um, an equivalency, equivalency between two or more ratios. And then I already said this, but ratio is just a relationship between two quantities. So the ratio to cats to dog, so we can say cats to dogs is two to three. So this is the relationship between the quantities. So that means that if there are 18 cats, then how many dogs are there? So we, let's say let number of dogs equal 18. So you can see that in order to get the number of cat, uh, in order to get the number of dogs, you multiply the number of cats by three over two. So we can say that dogs, or we'll say, oh, sorry, I meant to say D. And then we can say let number of cats equal C. So then we can say that the number of dogs, D, is always equal to three over two times number of cats C. So using this, we know, okay, in this case, 18 is the number of cats. So D is equal to three over two times uh, 18 is equal to 27. So that means there are 27 dogs in the pound. The other way to do this is something called a cross, uh, we'll say it's something called a cross multiplying. So what you do is this. Draw, draw little arrows like this, and you multiply you multiply the diagonal. So you say 2d, 2 times d, is equal to 3 times 18. So this is just a quick trick you can use. And when you have a proportion like this, where two ratios are equal, you should, and you have to make sure that the order of the ratios, like it's 2 to 3, 18 to d, not 2 to 3, d to 18. Just check that. Uh, because cats should be on the same side. So when you have two ratios like this uh, in a proportion, then you can do a cross product of the diagonals. You get two times the number of dogs is equal to three times the number of uh, three times 18. So that means two D is equal to 54. So yeah, indeed, D is 27. So there's two ways to do this problem. One is more of a fraction approach. The second is the quicker approach, which uh, relates to the uh, cross multiplication um, property in Portions, which we'll use again in the next problem. So in this problem, we, let's see if we have any questions first. Okay. So in this problem, we're saying boys to girls is four to five. I think there 
there's someone in the waiting room. I'm just gonna let them in. Quick, quick. Um, okay, so the number of tools uh, is four to five. And we're given that the total number of students in the campus is 108. So that means, you know, we have the ratio between boys and girls. We don't have any information about total. So we should include total. We'll say this is T. We should include some total. And then the total would be nine in this case, because four plus five is nine. So the ratio between boys to girls to the total is four to five to nine. So you can have ratios with three quantities. And the reason why the total is the sum of boys and girls is because um, the total thing is the number of boys plus the number of girls. That's how many people are at the camp. Give me a second, I have to turn on a setting. Okay, so boys to girls, the total is four to five to nine, as we said, and we're given that the total number of students is 108. And I asked how many boys at the camp. So that means, since we knew the total, the number of girls at the camp doesn't matter in this problem because the question asks for the number of boys and the information we're given is total. So all we care about is the ratio to boys to total. And the ratio is four to nine. So if we say, okay, let this be B, and use our cross product thing again, to say, okay, so then since the this is a proportion of two ratios, then four to nine is one ratio, B to 108 is one ratio. We can do the diagonal cross multiplication. So four times 108 is equal to 9B, then B is going to be equal to uh, uh, 48. So that means that the, there are 48 boys in the camp. The way we check this is, okay, if the ratio between boys and girls is 45, and there are uh, 48 boys, that means that, sorry, that means that there are 60 girls, and then we can check, yes, if there are 60, 60 girls and 48 boys, then the total number of students is in fact 108. So this confirms that, or this is a way we check our work. Um, and it's important that when we're checking the exact same thing that we did before, uh, but instead what we do is we, um, you know, we do it in this different way to make sure that like there's no mistake. Um, checking back to the original conditions of the problem. Okay, problem five is uh, more of a word problem again. So, uh, someone is swimming, uh, Lisa is swimming a lap in the pool, and when she first starts, when she was a beginner, she can complete 10 laps, um, 10 laps in 25 minutes. Now she can finish 12 laps in 24 minutes. By how many minutes has she improved her lap time? So this problem is asking us to calculate the lap time of each uh, when she was a beginner and when she was a starter. So we can say beginner and when she's more experienced. So when she's a beginner, um, 10 laps, 25 minutes. So we're trying to find the lap time. The lap time will be one lap. So that means if we use the ratio and we divide both both sides by 10, we say, okay, this is one lap in 2.5 minutes. Now, when she's an expert, she does 12 laps in 24 minutes. So if we convert this to a ratio where it's only one lap, because we're trying, this is a unit ratio where something is only one. So this is kind of a unit conversion. Uh, we're, we're trying to find it in terms of one. It's a unit ratio, right? So in order to make it 12 laps in 24 minutes, in order to make there only be one lap, what we do is we divide both the number of laps and number of minutes by 12. We say, okay, this is the same as one lap in uh, two minutes. So she improved her lap time by 0 0.5 minutes. This is where it's important to check in the problem. If they asked by how many seconds she improved her lap time, then the answer is 30 seconds. But they asked how many minutes. So it's always important when you uh, solve out the problem um, to go back and check. Okay, what are they actually actually asking? Let's let's like, confirm that's actually minutes, and we don't have to convert this to seconds because like you don't want to solve the entire problem and then make a small mistake where your answer is equivalent. It's just not what the unit they're looking for. Okay, so now we have a math counts problem, um, and it's a 
fairly straightforward problem um, that you uses the uh, the ratio, the proportion cross multiplying thing that I talked about. So I'll give everyone a minute uh, to solve this problem on their own, and then we'll come back and try it, uh, try to solve it. I see some different answers in the chat, so just be careful. So yeah, remember, don't raise your hand, but instead, uh, instead of raising your hand, remember to put something in the chat. So yeah, I see some more correct answers. That's good. I think everyone has put either one or two and one of two answers. One of those answers correct, one of the, those answers wrong. So maybe I can explain why that wrong answer is wrong. So we're given four is to x. So we're going to write our uh, portion first ratio. Second ratio is x is to 16. Then what is the value of x? So here we have x squared. We're going to do the cross multiplying. So these two multiply with each other. And these two multiply with each other. So x squared is equal to 4 times 16 is 64. And then this means x is equal to 8. I think a reason, maybe a reason why a lot of you are getting this wrong is you thought that 4 is to x as x squared is to 16. Uh, but I changed the problem from the book slightly. Um, so maybe that is why, because I wanted to show the concept rather than making it more complicated. Yeah, so the answer is 8, actually. Um, oh, why can't the answer be negative 8 as well? OK, so actually, that is correct. The answer can be, uh, just remember to put, put something in the chat instead of uh, saying it out loud, but that is correct. The answer can be eight as well. But when we're dealing with ratios, we like this would this would probably be like okay if four inches is to uh I don't know eight inches as eight inches. So normally in ratios it's always positive numbers. But you are right because if we have uh if you have like negative eight here and negative eight here, then the ratio is the same. The ratio is like you're multiplying by negative two. So yeah te technically yeah you're right it could be plus or minus eight. Uh, I think in ratios people it just Tend to do only, uh, tend to do only positive numbers because you're doing with quantities uh, like measurements. And measurements are always positive. For example, like you never have a negative number of inches. So I think this is a, yeah last problem for ratios, and then we're gonna do some quick problems with percentages. Uh, so this is a, a very long problem. So take a bit of time to read it. So you have a marathon ratio of runners to joggers is two to 19. Uh, and there's 4,200 participants to begin the race and 500 joggers actually drop during the race, they drop out. Uh, and then what is the ratio of runners to joggers among those who finish the races? That's the question. So there's gonna be some more ratio proportions here. Uh, and then we're gonna have to change that ratio to find the final ratio because 500 joggers are gonna drop out of the race. Okay, so let's see what we have. Yes, good job. So, we, so that's good. So step in this problem is to say, okay, how many people actually, uh, how many people actually um, finish the race? Uh, that would be a crucial step. So some people did say that in the chat. So that's good. So let's start solving this problem. So we have, we'll say runners, we'll say R to J, runners to joggers, and it starts at 2 to 19. And we know that we'll also include a total. Total, because we're given that there are actually 
uh, 4200 total. 4, there, are, there are 4200 total. And now the, the thing is, okay, if there's 19, if there's two runners, 19 joggers, that means that the total ratio will be 21. And now we need to convert, okay, if, if there are, if this is the ratio and there's actually four four thousand two hundred joggers, then what is how many runners are there? How many joggers are there? So if you do some cross products or if you solve it, how many are like however you want, you see okay, there's actually forty runners and sorry, four hundred runners. Four hundred runners, three eight zero zero joggers and four two zero zero uh total people and now the next step in the problem is okay 500 joggers drop out so now we subtract 500 from the number of joggers and we're given okay now there's 400 runners left because the number of runners doesn't change and there's three thousand three hundred joggers left so this means that the ratio of runners to joggers is 400 to 3300. But if you give this as the final answer, it probably won't get accepted for full credit. You just have to um, remember I said simplify the fractions and put ratios. So the final answer is the ratio is 4 to 33, which a lot of you said in the chat. So that's good. This is another like, quick uh, example of a ratio problem. It's just this one is a little more lengthy in terms of words, so it's important to read this fully to understand that, okay, 500 joggers dropped out. Um, and you can see how, you know, some, the ratios aren't, aren't always just going to be like, just solve the ratio. They're going to add another step, uh, like 500 jog joggers dropped out, now find their new ratio. So it'll be like that. So now some quick tips on percentages. So percentages are just fractions, so you can use them similarly. Uh, so 50% is the same as a fraction of one half. And along that line, you should memorize common fractions and percentages. Um, so what I mean by that is like three fourths is 75%, one third is 33.333% uh, two fifths is 40%. You should memorize those common fraction conversions to percentages and percentages to fractions because they show up a lot and it saves you an extra step of actually working out what that uh, saves you an extra step of working out, okay, what the thing actually is. The next thing I want to say is the word of in math almost always means multiply. I've actually talked about this before in previous uh, classes in, in within this course, so we've seen that before. So especially in percentage problems, if they say percent of 100, they mean multiply, they, they mean multiply 20% and 100 together. Um, so that's how you get 20% of 100. So problem one, uh, I want you guys to do on your own for about two minutes. Um, and then the, the next problem, the same page, I want also you guys to do on your own for two minutes because I think it's good practice. Um, and then we'll join together again and do it. Um, so I'll set a timer for, set a timer for Let's say three minutes and then we'll come back. A lot of good current current dance for number one already.
yeah, so I see a lot of good answers for number one. I think number two seems to be a bit trickier because it's actually like a two-step problem, whereas number one is a lot of the same thing. So I think we have one minute left on the clock, so keep going if you're not yet finished. Most people have actually got number one right, that's great. About 30 seconds left. Okay, that's three minutes. Timer has completed. So let's see if there's any questions. No, okay, all right. So yeah, I think like almost like 20-ish to 30-ish people got number one right. So let's look at what the speed. So remember, we saw what was, that was the next problem. But okay, compute 40% of 20% of 10% of um, 80,000. So the way I like to do these problems is work backwards. So first, we're just going to look at 10% of 80,000. So you know, saying 10% of 80,000 is the same as multiplying 80,000 by 10%, and 10% is just one over 10, so we're pretty much multiplying 80,000 by one over 10, and we'll get 8,000. Now the next step is, now we're gonna take go to the next level, and we're gonna do, we're gonna do 20% of 88,000. So 20% is one fifth, and remember of is multiplication. So this is one fifth times 80,000, and the results will be 400, I think. No, sorry. Um, the result is 1,600. Uh, because one fifth of 88,000 is 1,600. And the final step is, okay, now we're just, now this is simple, right? It's just 40% of 1600, zero zero, and that's 640. Uh, the other way you can do this problem is, okay, you convert each of the uh, percentages into things like into fractions, so like this. And then since of is multiplication, uh, we multiply all of these out. So you can just do this all at once and get 640. Both are good ways to do, do this problem. I like to work backwards, like 10% of 80,000 is this, 20% of this is that, and then 40% of this is the final answer. I like to do it that way, but both ways are uh, good ways to do it. Um, so yeah. Next problem, this is the one that most people will actually think more people got it wrong, they got it right. So first we're gonna start with 18% of 20, oh sorry, 18% of 50 is what percent of 24? So the first step that we have to do is we have to find what is this? Like, okay, this is gonna be some number, and then we have to find what, we have to find that number is what percent of 24. But the, the first step is always gonna be what actually is 18% of 50? So 18% of 50, you can say 18% is 18 over 100 in August multiplication. So we're doing 18 over 100 times 50. Uh, that's gonna be equal to nine over 50. Sorry, that's going to be equal to nine. Sorry. So that's that's nine. Um, because 18 over 100 is nine over 50, the nine over 50 times 50 is nine. So now the question is, nine is what percent of 24? Do you see how we did that? We said 18% of 50 is nine. So we can replace in the question, in the main question, we can replace 
18 percent of 50 is 9 because they're equivalent. So now the question is, 9 is what percent of 24? 9 over 24, you convert that into uh, 3 over 8 by simplifying fractions. We divide in both numerator and uh, denominator by uh, 3. And then we know 3 over 8 is 37.5%. If you memorize your common percentages and fractions, you can do it that way. The other way is if you long divide 3 over 8, you'll get 0 0.375. And then, okay, 0 0.375 is equal to 375 over 1,000, which is equal to this as a fraction. So the answer in this problem is 37.5%. Um, Thirty-seven point five percent is the answer. So this is the last problem for the day. It's another word problem, so you can see uh, there's a lot of word problems that are showing up um, because as we move into ratios, decimals, fractions, percentages, um, and we just are equipped with we just we, just, we learned how to do equations in the third class of this course. At, once we have those skills, a lot of problems now are going to be um, word problems because. Those are the kind of the main things that we need for um, word problems, like for, to solve word problems. So, at some point this season, the unicorns had won 60% of their games, and after that point, they won eight more games and lost two to finish the season, having won 65% of their games. How many games did the unicorns play this season? This is a very, very typical problem. Um, so you'll see this type of problem a lot, and the key is to say, okay. Let G equal number of games um, before uh, 10 additional games. So like, let's we'll say before, like before the point. So let's say the point is where one day won 60% 60, 60 of the games. So when they win 60% of the games, so we'll say like winning percentage, winning percentage is equal to games won over games played and up to the point up to the point that they talk about in the problem where they say okay they've won six percent of their games then their winning percentage was 0 0.6 times g over g but then what happens is they play 10 additional games and they win eight more games so they they take the 0.6 G, they're gonna win eight additional games. And now you're gonna divide by, you have the games played, they win 10 additional, but they also lose in two additional. And the games they lose are considering the games they played. So now it's over 10. So now we have a word problem that we have to solve. So this should be 65 because after the 10 additional games, they have, they won 65%. So now we have an equation we have to solve, uh, which is, 65 over 100 is equal to 0 0.6 plus 8 over g plus 10. So the, the first step, obviously, as we talked about before, is to clear out the denominator by multiplying both sides by both denominators. We'll get 65 times g plus 10 is equal to 100 times 0 0.6. Sorry, this should be 0 0.6 g. 0 0.6 g plus 8. Um, so now it's 65 g plus 650, that is equal to uh, 60G plus 800. If we solve this, we're going to get uh, 5G is equal to 150. So they played 30 games before the point. So now how many games they played during the season? So if you say 30 is the answer, this is actually going to be wrong because the question is how many games did they play during the entire season? And we're saying, th we're saying 30 is just the number of games before that point in the earlier in the season, before they play the 10 additional games. So then total number of games is 40. So now we can actually uh, do a quick check of this problem. So, okay, they won 30, th there's 30 games up to the point. They won 60% of that. So 60% of 30 um, is going to be 18. And then they won 26 more games, so that's going to be that's going to go to 26. And they lost two, so now 30 plus 10 is 40. And yes, indeed, 26 over 40 is the same as 65 over 100 or 65. So we can confirm that the final answer to this problem is 40. Yep, good. There's some correct answers in the chat.
Uh, so yeah, the correct answer to this problem is 40. So that, that is it for today. Uh, next week, we're doing a slightly new topic. So the, I know the past two weeks have been a lot of fractions, decimals, percentages, common theme. But the next topic is new. Um, the slides will be posted as always. You can email me with questions. Uh, and remember to send some, there were some good problem suggestions that I actually incorporated in today's class. So remember to send the problem suggestions in the Google form. Um, and if there's a specific question topic that you like me to cover, uh, then again, you can put that in the problem suggestion thing. So that is it for today's class. Uh, you can ask any questions in the chat. I'll stick around for um, a few And yeah. Thank you.